Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial for ethical hacking and penetration testing. So in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to install Kali Linux on MacBook Pro or Air or whichever version you have. And this is specifically mentioned for the Mac OS X, which we would be, which I assume that you would be using because it is the latest one. So the things that you would need would be the grub tomb, the refind, the specific boot thing which you would be using, and <coughs> The pros of installing would be we would be using Grub2 for EFI, which is simple and easy to use. And Mac OS X can be encrypted, but requires extra work. And I have I would not be teaching you in this tutorial. And Kalinux would be encrypted as well, and it will coexist with the uh, Mac OS X. And Kalinux bootable USB cannot be booted with the RE find version. <laughs> so since Kalinux 1.1 is based on Debian. Uh, which is not EFI enabled by which is EFI enabled by default. We will not be uh, requiring the REFIND to go ahead and install it on Cal MacBook Pro. And but still, uh, just in case if you have any older version of uh, MacBook, then you would require if you have any version earlier than MacBook 2012, then you would require REFIND. So you can go on the Google on this website. I'll just go ahead and open here and. Let's search REFIND and we need to install this since uh, Mac does not have the UEF5 version. So we need to install this. You can go ahead and, uh, okay. So you need to go ahead and download this for the Mac version. Yeah, obviously it is for Mac. So once you install it, it will be able to detect dual boot and then you can go ahead and install this on your specific um, uh, MacBook Pro. And you can see this are uh, the described processes, but this is not which we would be using because Kali Linux requires a different thing. So first thing first, install REFIND on MacBook Pro and then boot up your MacBook and download the REFIND binary zip file and extract it. Once you've extracted it, uh, open your terminal and type to CD downloads and then go ahead and start. Let's assume that I have this MacBook Pro. So if this is my MacBook terminal, go to your uh, uh, CD refind and whichever directory you have and since i won't have i'll just be assuming and once you have the specific uh, folder just going to type period forward slash install period sh and it will install everything related to refind inside your macbook pro and at the macbook pro os x execute the disk utility create a new partition and make it as two one for macintosh hd that's hard disk and new one for macintosh hd2 and then remove the newest created partition do not format it leave it as it is and after that shut it down insert cal linux live uh, install usb to the macbook uh, air macbook pro and then power on your macbook uh, pro with long pressing option key when the cal linux boot menu is displayed select <coughs> live amd64 and press the tab to add persistence at the, at the end of the line the cal linux will be installed and install it as per your normal process as to the way we do that. So next time when you go ahead and try to run uh, the Cal Linux, it will ask you whether to start the MacBook Pro or to install or to run the uh, normal version that is Cal Linux. So once you have all of these things, the next thing that we need to do is to go ahead and install the live USB. Listen, and so before I proceed, let me explain to you what live USB is. I'll just go ahead and open the Cal Linux website and I'll just type mm, Kali Live USB. So what this does is that is uh, you need to boot your computer or laptop, whatever it is, to your uh, USB drive. You need to go ahead and uh, make your USB drive bootable uh, for your Kali Linux. And once you have that, you can straight away go ahead and connect it to your computer and run your Kali Linux even without installing it on your computer. So once you could do that, no matter what you do, you will not be uh, there. Would be no no trace of you getting caught even if anything goes wrong or for any other thing and just one more thing uh, if you go and install the live USB you won't be able to update that until unless you go and install the Cal Linux persistent so and you need to have the unit boot in in order for you to go ahead and convert your uh, Cal Linux inside a USB way to make it bootable or you can use uh, the win32 disk imager which I would let me show you win32 disk imager if you have a Windows operating system then you can go ahead and run this win32 disk imager which you, uh, through which you can go ahead and boot uh, your ISO into your USB drive and you have this on your sourceforge.net 
just download this install it and it will run and as you can see that once it is a bootable you can straight away go ahead and run each and everything and if you need to make it persistence there is still a way persistent means that you would be able to upgrade and any changes that you make will be saved in your usb drive i cannot show you that because i don't have a usb drive as of now but you can do that and i would uh, i would suggest you having a minimum of uh, let's say 16 gb of usb because a cal linux will take approximately uh, a total of uh, uh, 7 uh, or 6 GB of your total space and remaining should be there in case you need to install anything separately or anything extra and once you connect it you will be able to run each and everything related to Kali Linux through that USB so that is what Kali USB is so now we know now let's go ahead and configure the remaining things that we need so I can go ahead and show you as to the next thing that we need to do is we need to update our social engineering toolkit it would be to start that just type S E T O O L K I T. Once you hit enter, it will start and type yes, enter, it will start. So, need to update all the third party modules and SET configuration. So, just type 3 as you can see that 3 means third party modules. So, you can see we have these three modules, two modules over here to update these things. Go ahead and update uh, the uh, social engineering toolkit that would be 4 and to go ahead and check all the updates and get itself the latest updates. After that go ahead and update your SAT configuration type 5 and hit enter and yes we have all the latest updates. The next thing that we would need to do would be to go ahead and uh, update the MSF console so I need to type MSF console and we need to go ahead and update that. Uh, so that because sometimes what happens is that we it's not updated along with your normal repositories That's the reason we need to go ahead and specifically install that So it's starting It can take a bit of time to start and the things that we need to go ahead and install would be uh, let's check if we have the library office over here okay we don't have the library office let me check okay okay we don't have the library office and as you can see that this is the metasploit framework which has 1389 exploits as of now which are out of which 788 are auxiliary and 356 payloads out of which 37 are encoders so to update this which i will be teaching you later on so first we need to update so just type msf update and hit enter and you can go ahead and expect weekly updates on using this method because uh, you cannot find such kind of updates on a daily basis or when you go ahead and type your normal aptitude get install so or aptitude get update so this is one way of doing that and along with this we need to install the java and the Adobe Flash as well. So we'll go ahead and also type apt get install open jre slash sdk slash don't remember exactly. Let's uh, check. Okay. Install Java uh, Kali Linux and install Adobe Flash and as you can see over here we have different versions you can go ahead and also download it manually but I would suggest updating it through okay we have, we have Start apt get install flash and yeah flash plugin non free perfect we have it so I'll just by the time I'll just install this let's say if we have received any updates over here okay we have updates as you can see over here so 2635 MB of file and uh, I won't be going ahead and installing that right now. Uh, because it would take a very long time. I'll up update it in the background. I'll let you know and as you can see that 
uh, we have this version over here okay so let me get install okay there okay, here we have it I'll just copy that and paste it over here able to get install uh, open JDK hyphen 7 hyphen JRE and uh, yes I need to install that yes okay I did not press yes that's the reason uh, it was not able to authenticate it and after that we can also go ahead and type apt get install flash plugin hyphen non free and it will get installed again so these are the few basic things that you need to remember to go ahead and configure these things and once you have all of these things ready updating these things upgrading and installing these specific things after that we can go ahead and start attacking your windows 7 and just make sure that you have all the updates if you don't then you will lose one or more important things which you may not be able to run under your computer so that is it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will be starting with the basic hacking stuff and footprinting and methodology